Hi, fifth graders. I hope that you're getting used to the online learning. It seems like it's going much smoother than it was last week, and we're starting to kind of get the hang of it a little bit. Um, we are going to go over your science lesson for today. And last time we talked about what force was. Remember, that's a push or a pull. And today we're going to talk about the four fundamental forces in nature. And there's actually a slideshow that goes with this too. And so I'm going to post, um, you know, how you can get online and watch the slideshow that goes with it. That way you get a visual of what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you have it, remember you can print this out. I have this on the science Google Classroom page. You can either print it out and highlight it, or you can just pull it up and read it along with me. Whichever you prefer is totally fine. But it's on that Google Classroom science page. I have the PDF form of your physics booklet, since I can't give you the physical copy. Okay, so we're on page four, and it says the four fundamental forces in nature. So paragraph one. Physicists have identified four non-contact forces that affect all matter in the universe. These four forces, strong nuclear force, electromagnetic force, weak nuclear force, and gravitational force are the strongest forces in the universe. Okay, remember non-contact force means they don't have to touch. Okay, contact you have to touch. So if I'm doing, if I'm pushing on something that would be contact force because I have to physically push it. But gravity does not have to touch me. It just pulls me down automatically. You can't see it. Okay. So just remember those four forces are strong nuclear force, electromagnetic force, weak nuclear force, and gravitational force. Okay. And the word nuclear actually has to do with a nucleus of an atom, which we talked about towards the beginning of the year. Okay. And remember in the nucleus, that's where your protons and your neutrons are. That's important to know with this. Okay, and then electromagnetic has a combination of the words electricity and magnet. So it's going to have to do with both of them. Okay, so now we're gonna look in more detail about each one of these forces. So paragraph two is gonna talk about strong nuclear force. This is gonna to have to do with the nucleus of an atom. So paragraph two. Strong nuclear force, also called the strong force, is the force that binds protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of atoms. It also binds smaller particles within protons and neutrons together. Strong nuclear force only affects particles within the nucleus of an atom and is the strongest force in the universe, okay, because it has to do with the inside nucleus of each atom. So it's a very strong force. That's why it's strong nuclear force. So at the beginning of the first sentence, highlight the words strong nuclear force. Okay, it binds the protons and neutrons together. So that's why it's so important and strong. And strong nuclear force also binds together smaller particles. Because remember we talked about there's even smaller particles than those protons and neutrons. Okay, and those are called quarks and gluons. And we're not going to get into real deep detail into that. You'll learn about that in high school when you get to chemistry and that kind of stuff. Um, but those are the parts of the protons and the neutrons. That's what those are called. So strong nuclear force is also called strong interaction or strong nuclear interaction. Those are just extra names for them. Okay, so paragraph three is going to talk about electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is the force within atoms that attracts electrons and protons to one another. It is also the force that causes atoms to bond to, sorry, to bond to form elements and compounds. Electromagnetic force is what causes electricity and magnetism. Electromagnetic force is the second strongest force. Okay, so strong nuclear force, that's the strongest. Electromagnetic magnetic is the second strongest. So at the beginning of the first sentence, highlight the words electromagnetic force. And of course, if it has electro or electricity, that has to do with electrons or on the outside of the nucleus of an atom. 
and that bonds atoms together to form those elements and compounds that we talked about towards the beginning of the year. So what's keeping them together is that electromagnetic force. Okay? So at the beginning of the sentence, you highlight electromagnetic force of the first sentence. Okay, and then paragraph four is going to talk about weak nuclear force. Okay, weak nuclear force, also called the weak force, is the force that causes smaller particles inside protons and neutrons to change and give off energy in the form of radiation. Weak nuclear force only affects particles within protons and neutrons and is the third strongest force. <clears throat> okay, so it's within the protons and the neutrons and it changes them and gives off radiation. Okay, so if you think about how strong radiation is, that's only the third strongest force in nature is the radiation. Okay, and that's weak nuclear force. Okay, so at the beginning of the first sentence, I want you to highlight weak nuclear force. Okay, it's also called weak interaction or weak nuclear interaction also. Okay, and then paragraph five, we're going to talk about gravitational force. Paragraph five, gravitational force, also called gravity, is the force that attracts objects in the universe toward one another. All matter has gravitational force. Remember that. The greater the mass of an object, the greater its gravitational force is. The sun, which is the most massive object in our solar system, has more gravitational force than any other object in our solar system. The sun's gravitational force causes Earth and the other planets to orbit the sun. Gravitational force is the fourth strongest force. Just think about that. You all know how strong gravity is. And the sun is so large. So the larger the object, the more gravity it has, the more gravitational force. So the sun, it's because of the sun's gravity that we are all orbiting around it in our solar system. It's the gravitational force that's keeping us in that orbit. Okay? And that's only the fourth strongest force. Think about how strong, strong nuclear force is for it to be that much stronger than gravity. It's very strong. Okay, so at the beginning of the first sentence, highlight the words gravitational force. And of course, like we said, the sun is the biggest object in our solar system, so it has the most gravitational force. Okay, so the gravitational force at the outer edge of the sun is 28 times greater than the force of gravity at the surface of Earth. So that's how much stronger its pull is on us. The moon has less mass than Earth. Okay, so of course, the moon's gravity is going to be less than Earth's. So we talked about before, and we'll get more into weight in the next lesson, but weight has to do with the pull of gravity on you. So you have mass, that's how much substance you have within you. Okay, that's how much matter is in something is its mass. But if you add that gravitational pull, that's what makes your weight. So that's why people weigh less on the moon than they do on the Earth, because the gravitational pull on the moon is less than the gravitational pull on Earth. Your mass is the same. The gravitational pull is different. Okay? So the gravitational force on the surface of the moon is only one-sixth the gravitational force on, on the surface of Earth. So if you take your weight and divide it by six, that's how much you would weigh on the moon. So the Earth's gravitational force causes the moon to orbit Earth. And Albert Einstein's theory of gravity, called the theory of general relativity, states that light can be bent by strong gravitational force. Black holes have gravity that is so strong that even light cannot escape. Look how strong those black holes are. So let's read a little bit more about gravitational force. Paragraph six. The effect an object's gravitational force has on other objects 
depends on the masses of the objects and their distances apart. Okay, so of course, the closer together they are, the more of the pull is, the pull is going to be. The more massive an object is, and the closer it is to other objects, the more its gravitational force attracts them. All objects near Earth are pulled downward toward the center of Earth by the Earth's gravitational force because of the Earth's large mass and proximity. Okay, so at the end of the first sentence, you're going to highlight the phrase, depends on the masses of the objects and their distances apart. Okay, so something with very little mass that's farther away is not going to have as much gravitational pull as if something is a lot of mass and is much closer. Okay. Um, so in the late 1500s, Galileo observed that the Earth's gravity pulls objects toward the sur surface of Earth at the same rate. Okay, and we would have done this in class, but basically if you dropped a highlighter and a penny at the same time, do you think they would hit at the same time? Okay, so think about that. And this is actually something that you could test out at home right now. You can take two objects that have different masses, take something with a very little mass and then something with heavier mass, hold them at the same height and drop them and see if they fall and hit the ground at the same time. You can even time them if you want to. Okay, um, so the masses of course are not the same. The highlight, and we would have taken a highlighter and a penny. The highlighter would have more mass, okay? And if they were at the same height, they would still hit the ground at the same time, okay? So what Galileo observed is that if objects with different masses are dropped from the same height, at the same time, and there's no air resistance, gravity pulls them toward the surface of the earth at the same rate. And they will hit the surface of the earth at the same time. Okay, and there's also um, a video that you can check out if you would like to on the Nancy Larson Science website. And of course, I'll give you that password and the link and everything. There's a video called World's Biggest Vacuum Chamber that's under optional website resources. So that's something you can check out if you'd like to see how that works. Okay. And then there's also, so that video is about an experiment that scientists conducted to compare what happens when a bowling ball and feathers are dropped. So you think that's a huge difference, but you'll have to watch the video to see what happens. Okay. And then there's also a slideshow under lesson 71 and it's called fundamental forces. So like I said, I'm going to give you um, the link and the password to go in and watch that slideshow and it'll be listed under the assignment with this video too. So make sure to check that out also. Okay. And there's also, and I found another YouTube video that I'll link you to also that explains really well the fundamental forces. And some physicists think there's a possibility that all of the four fundamental forces may be variations of a single unnamed force. So there's a possibility of a fifth one that we don't even know about yet. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. And I am going to post the Lesson 71 review tomorrow morning that I want you to get way ahead of yourself. Um, so you can always rewatch this video if you need a little refresher before you do the assignment. Um, but I hope that you've been reading along and highlighting if you can. If not, that's that's okay as long as you're reading along and paying attention. So I really miss all of you, and I wish I could be seeing your smiling faces, interacting with you in class. Um, but definitely let me know how things are going for you, what's working and what's not working, because I want to know how everything's working out for you. So until next time, we'll see you.